This PowerPoint will show how to model some applications using sinusoidal functions. And this first example, we're going to take a look at a, an application involving bicycles. And uh, we have two people riding bicycles, uh, John and Shirley. And as we go across the screen here and draw the graph, you'll see that uh, John is riding the larger bicycle. Uh, he completes in three seconds three cycles, Shirley completes four. And the first question we're asked, what's the wheel size of each bike? And so if you take a look at John's bike, the pebble starts the top of his wheel and varies from a height of 60 centimeters down to zero. So he's riding a bicycle with 60 centimeter tires. Shirley's riding a smaller one, the, bike, the pebble starts at the height of the axle goes up to a height of 45 and down to zero, so hers has a 45 centimeter bike. In B, we're asked to determine the period of rotation and the speed the bikes are traveling. So notice that John completes three cycles in three seconds, so the length of his period is one second. Shirley completes four cycles in three seconds, so to determine the length of the period of her graph, we take the three seconds and divide it by the four cycles and the length of uh, each of her cycles is 0.75 seconds. Now to determine the speed the bikes are traveling, we're going to use John's, we could have easily used Shirley's. Um, the distance around the wheel for John's bike, we use a circumference as pi times diameter. He has 60 centimeters tires, so they're 0 0.60 meters. So pi times 0 0.60 is 1.88 meters. Now using velocity equals distance over time, the distance that his bicycle travels is 3 times 1.88 meters divided by the time of 3 seconds, which works out to 1.88 meters per second. We could have just as easily used Shirley's bicycle. The difference would be we'd have 0.45 meters here, so we'd have a shorter distance. And the distance she traveled would be 4 times that shorter distance in the 3 seconds, but it would still work out to 1.88 meters per second. In the example on the second page, we're asked to read some characteristics from a sinusoidal graph. And this graph is the graph of a pendulum as it swings. The rest position would be, of course, this horizontal line here. The pendulum starts 10 centimeters on one side and swings to 10 centimeters on the other and then back and forth, etc. The amplitude would be the distance from peak to that line or the, tr a, the line to a trough, which of course is 10 centimeters. We're asked to find the period of the sinusoidal function. And notice that if we start right here at the top of the first peak and cycle from there through to the next peak, it takes a time of two seconds. So the period would be two seconds. Last example on uh, page three, we have this uh, function we're going to graph. H equals 3.1 times the cos of 360 over 365 times D minus 172 plus 12.2. It gives the number of hours of daylight, so h is the number of hours of daylight, as a function of the day of the year. So d is the day of the year for Windsor, Ontario. And we're going to graph this using uh, pencil and paper and also show you some technology as well. To graph it using pencil and paper, uh, I would make up a table of values and substitute perhaps 0 and 100 and 200 and 300 days, those kinds of numbers in place of d and find the number of hours of daylight in those days. And if you do that, this is what the graph looks like. It is certainly a sinusoidal function. If we were to uh, plug that formula at the top of the page in the graphing calculator, this is the image we would get, same as the one above. And we're asked the length of the period. Notice that over here the uh, graph does not start right above zero. It starts uh, actually 10 days before that because the shortest day of the year is on December 21st. And uh, so that's why it seems to start a little bit to the left of that vertical line. The length of the period would be 365 days. Now we're asked how much daylight is there on the longest day of the year. So the longest day of the year would be, of course, right here. It's something a little less than 16. It's actually on day 172. That's the uh, 21st of June. And so if I were to plug in 172 in place of D here, 172 minus 172 is 0 times this fraction is still 0. And the cos of 0 is 1. So we actually have 3.1 times 1, which is 3.1, plus the 12.2, which gives us 15.3 hours of daylight on that day. So that's the 
most hours of daylight in Windsor, Ontario during the year. And the last question we're asked to find h of 60 and explain its meaning. So to find h of 60, we would plug 60 in place of d here. And so there's the 60. And uh, if we evaluate that, we get 11.1. .1. We could also use the graphing calculator and uh, trace and plug 60 in place of x. And so we see also we have 11.1 .1 hours of daylight. So h of 60 equals 11.1. .1. That 11.1 .1 is the number of hours of daylight on the 60th day of the year, or March 1st. And that's the end of the PowerPoint.